When I was playing video games excessively, I didn't really feel like I was missing out on social experiences. After all, I was playing with friends from all over the world, so I didn't really feel like I needed to go out on a Friday night to actually go and meet people. When played in moderation, video games can provide some social benefits. You can learn things like cooperation through different team play, communication skills, and you can even meet people from all over the world. But when played excessively, gaming can impact your social development. So here are five ways that can happen. Now, if you want to get gaming under control in your life, then go to gamequiz.com apply and I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process you can use so you can feel more inspired, more motivated, and more productive in your life. First, video games can lead you to developing poor social skills. This primarily happens because the more time you're spending online in front of a screen, the less time you're spending face-to-face -face where you're actually learning to read social cues and understanding social culture. For instance, one of the clients that I work with, for him, he feels significantly more comfortable texting about his emotions and texting about his experiences than actually talking about it. Now, this might be a normal case for some people, but we're seeing an increase of this as people are spending more and more time online. Having poor social skills is going to lead to different problems in the future. It's gonna be harder to go for an interview for a job and to get it. It's gonna be harder to have relationships. It's gonna impact your life in negative ways. Another way that gaming can impact your social development is through increased social anxiety and depression. This happens primarily because of the environment that you're in when you're playing games excessively. Often you're isolated in a room by yourself, you're not getting a lot of sunlight, and if anything, it's probably quite dark Dark in your room. If I was to describe a room that's dark, someone's isolated, those are conditions that lead to feeling more depressed and more socially anxious. That's why it's important to find balance with gaming where you're not isolated so much and you're still going out and meeting people and spending time with people face to face. You can also experience increased loneliness. Often the more you're gaming, the more you withdraw from normal relationships like with your family or with your friends. You don't feel like you're missing out because you're socializing online. However, many of those relationships you have online may be more shallow. Because they're the relationships that you have, you feel an attachment to them. But often, for instance, if you go to stop gaming so much, you might actually lose a bunch of your gamer friends. So all I would ask is if you're gonna lose your gamer friend the moment you stop gaming, is that really a friend? Is it just a relationship out of convenience? Gaming excessively can also lead you to have breakdowns in your relationships, whether that's romantic or with your family. I hear from clients every single day who say gaming's impacted their marriage, their girlfriend has left them, their boyfriend has left them, and the relationship they have with their family is breaking down significantly. Gaming often is a source of conflict with your loved ones and continuing to game excessively is only going to lead to further conflict in the future. And finally, toxicity. Some games, especially those like League of Legends or Call of Duty, can have incredibly toxic players. Online culture can also be very toxic, so if you're spending more and more time online, in games, and on social media, it's very easy for you to find yourself becoming more toxic yourself. It's a bit of a weird world because this happens online, but in the real world, being toxic has real social consequences. Personally, I just didn't like the person I was when I was playing video games excessively, and so I decided to stop. When I stopped gaming, my biggest goal was actually to improve my social skills. I wanted to go and make new friends, feel more in control of my social experience, and just feel more confident that I could go out there and actually be personable and likable. So I started to focus on things that would help me do that. I started to put myself in more social environments. I joined the group classes, like even a hip hop dance class at one point. I started putting myself into entrepreneurship clubs and I even moved to Boulder, Colorado where there was a community of people who were like-minded that I could connect with. So as I stopped gaming so much, I focused more on my social skills and over the last 10 years, they've developed a lot and I'm really grateful for that. So if you're watching this and you feel like gaming's impacting your social skills, you're not making a lot of friends, you don't feel very confident in yourself, 
then go to gamequiz.com slash apply and let's talk about it. I work with clients every single day, helping them not just get gaming under control, but improve the social side of their life and really start living the best life possible. I love to see the progress you guys are making and I love to see you start living life to the fullest. Instead of escaping in the games and feeling this shallow sense of your life, I wanna help you feel more productive, more fulfilled, and develop more meaning in your life. So you guys can go check that out and if it's a good fit, I'd love to talk to you. But I hope today's video helped you out. I hope it brought more awareness about how gaming might be affecting your social development and I hope that it helps you take action because life is is worth fighting for. So give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you in next week's video. All right, peace.